webinar on managing performance. Welcome, Di. Thanks, Sarah. How are you all today on this beautiful Melbourne day? For those Marina. of you who aren't in Melbourne, I hope you're having a delicious day like we're having. Anyway, today we are going to talk about that managing performance. And, you know, I think this is a bugbear of many leaders. It's something that we really struggle with. Um, and we struggle because we want to get it right and we don't want our people, of course, to then turn around and um, uh, sort of have a go at us about being bullying them or anything like that. So it's often something that we, you know, we, we, we can put off, but we need to learn to address these issues straight away. So for those of you who have been to or been on to the previous webinars, we would have talked about setting your people up for success through your orientation and induction and making sure you're giving them regular feedback. We did a whole unit on feedback where we reiterated that it's really important to address every, every situation and issue right at the very time that it happens. So then if it gets um, to the point that there is no change in either the behaviour or the skill performance of a, um, an employee, we can start going down to the standard um, performance management process. So by the end of today, we're going to be able to identify the difference between poor performance, misconduct and performance appraisals. We're also going to look at what are the causes for poor performance and conduct. And we're going to understand that performance management is ongoing. It's an everyday process. I'm also going to take you through the formal steps to performance management and misconduct and then can um, help you confidently conduct the formal conversation. So, what are things, what is poor performance? So poor performance is usually around their ability to do a job and it's things like not completing tasks on time, inaccurate entry or detail of information, that inability to use your systems and processes um, effectively or not understanding how to do an aspect of the role. So it's very much around the skill level um, of what an employee is supposed to do. And it can often get mixed up with what is poor conduct. So poor conduct or what we call misconduct is any behaviour which is actually a breach of their contract, your policies and procedures and your code of conduct such as coming to work late or not getting a doctor's certificate after two days off in a row or not following the um, procedures, policies and procedures or bullying and harassment. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky because you might have someone that is not completing their tasks on time and we will performance manage them. But what... Oh, is, We've got a problem here with sound. So what happens is that um, it could be due to the fact that they are late all the time. So what we need to do is make sure that we actually address the issue that is relevant. Is it that they're not doing their tasks on time because they're not capable of doing it or is it because they're not doing it on time because they are coming to work late or um, something like that. So just make sure that you are addressing the appropriate issue. Please, if you have any questions about any of these, please type them up um, and we will respond to them as we go. So they are the two differences, performance and misconduct. The serious misconduct, which we're not really going to go into too much today, but really this is something that is illegal. So it is very, it's a serious crime. It's theft, it's actually hitting someone. It's, if you think about it, is this a legal issue, then that's a serious misconduct. So now we want to look at what is a performance appraisal. And in the workplace, this is the performance appraisal or review that is done either on a six monthly or 12 monthly basis. And it's where the employee rates themselves, the manager rates themselves. Sometimes you have other people rating 
and we look back at to what the goals were that we set in the previous six months or 12 months. We look to see how we achieved those and then what are we going to aim for next year. And this is where you as a leader will look to your people and see what it is and where they want to go for the next 12 months and how are you going to support them. This is not the time to say on the 20th of June 2016 you came to work late. So that type of performance needs to be done on the spot at the time. This review or performance appraisal is there for the development of your people. So what causes poor performance or misconduct? Well, in quite simple terms, it is because the manager has not set this person up for success right at the very start. This means that you as a leader has not set clear instructions on how to do the task, not spending enough time through that orientation and induction time, not spending enough coaching time with that person when you delegate new tasks to them, um, not providing consistent feedback and praise. People need to be recognised for what they do and they need to be given the opportunity to be made aware of where they're not performing or not behaving. And we also, one of the other areas is, is not checking in, um, checking the understanding that the employee actually knows important information around policies and procedures. I know in one workplace that I did some work um, for them, they were having a lot of misconduct issues around people not bringing in doctor's certificates. And what we found when we did the research was that when we went back and looked at the orientation, we had found that the manager had actually just told the person about it, then gave them the policy manual to read, which we know no one actually reads properly, and left it at that. It was never followed up. There were never any questions. So do you understand what the policy is around sick leave? So it's your responsibility as a leader and as the manager to make sure that people are set up properly. The moment someone doesn't do something right, you need to give them feedback on it so they can improve. We all know that if people are made aware that they are not performing or behaving to the correct level, they will want to improve. There's only a very small percentage of people who are challenged by that, should I say, in a nice way. So, every day you need to manage the performance and the conduct of your people through giving feedback. And I'm harping on about this, and I'll keep harping on about it, because it's so important. And the moment they're not performing, you have the responsibility. This is your responsibility as a leader to give them feedback. And you also need to give recognition and praise for people's performance. If you hear someone speaking well to someone or addressing a situation or someone has improved something, you really need to give them praise. You think about it. How do you feel when someone gives you some praise and recognition? It makes you feel brighter, it makes you feel more motivated, so everybody needs it. The other tip is um, I, something that's really worked for me in the past when I've been in teams, to conduct a 15-minute focus meeting every week with every employee in your team. Now, I know a lot of people go, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to get this done. But schedule your time. This is a mandatory meeting with you. It's a time to sit down and to go absolutely no longer than 15 minutes, 10 minutes to 15 minutes max. And what you do is you sit down and you talk, talk to the person. How are you going? How was your weekend? What's going on? So tell me, what, was, what were some of the wins for you last week? It'd be an opportunity for you to then give them feedback and praise about something you know fantastic that you've observed or that you've heard for that person. 
and then talk to them about some of the um, you know, potential challenges that they might have for the coming week where you or other team members might be able to support them or you know, find out what's going on. And this is also an opportunity to give someone some feedback, particularly if you've got people who work remotely, um, it's, it's that opportunity where you're not seeing them every day. So is that a formal meeting or is that, a, like will you document this in terms of improvement or issues or is this just an informal off the record kind of chat? Yeah, it's an informal off the record chat. It is best to be done one on one because this is when you actually start building a much stronger rapport and a much stronger relationship with your people. Mm -hmm. They learn to trust you. And so they can say anything to you at this point? They can say anything. You'll find that when you first start it, they won't say much. Mm -hmm. But as the process, as you keep doing it and you consistently do it every single week, you'll find that they start to open up mm -hmm. more to you. And the more they can trust you, the more evidence that you've given them to trust them, the more they'll open up. And then they start feeling better about you giving them feedback. So if you have to give them constructive feedback, they kind of don't get so defensive because they go, well, actually, this person really values me. Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity, but um, I know for people that I've worked with that have done this consistently, they have said that they have seen a huge change in their team, have seen a huge change in some of those individuals that like to test you, um, and the productivity increases and the whole morale of the team improves because they feel valued that you are giving them the time. Okay. And Chloe's just asked, is it better to be done in groups like the whole team or is it more appropriate to have it one-on-one? No, on one? just a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, a one-on-one, -on -one, you can have your team meeting, so you might like to have your, you might have a monthly or, or fortnightly team meeting and in between times mm -hmm. you're always having these one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good question around when would you have these? I mean, do you want to get them early in the beginning of the week, but people are pretty busy, you know, Mondays are pretty flat out for people. Um, do you really want to wait until the end to reflect on what's happened this week, but then do people lose that over the weekend, kind of that what's been discussed? Yeah. So do we pick middle of the week? Well, look, it's really entirely up to your team and what works best for you and the team. Mm -hmm. You know, in a in a previous life when I was a training manager, all my trainers had to come in on a Friday afternoon and hand in their paperwork. Mm -hmm. So that was my time to do that. So that worked well for me. You may not do all of them all on one day. Mm -hmm. You might do one every morning. You Depend might want to pick your staff though, isn't it? Because so I feel like some people it's nap time on Friday afternoon, so well, it might not be right. a good time to no, do it. No, no, that's right. Or it might be a good time to do it. It might be a good time because then you can talk to them about the wins for the week. It's really up to you. It's really up to how you're going to work it. Um, you know, as I say, if you've got a team of five, you want to do one each day, that's fine. But it's um, you work out when the best time is for you to do mm -hmm. it. And then um, if you've got people who work out of the office and they need to come in, that's when you catch them. Yeah. And you just need to say to them, look, this is a mandatory meeting. And don't you go accepting any other meetings and pushing them out, you need to make that commitment because um, that makes them feel valued. Okay, so don't stand them up for another offer. Don't stand them up for a better offer, <laughs> is what I say. All right. So, in the situation that you have given your employee several lots of informal feedback about an issue. So if we have someone who keeps making um, the same mistakes on a document or on an activity or on, an, on a task, and you have given them two to maybe three informal conversations of feedback around it, you've provided them with a little bit of training, you've given them some coaching at the time, you then go, okay, the next time this happens, we actually need to go down the formal performance management stage. It's getting serious. No more than three informal sessions. Now, if you have an HR manager, you need to contact that person straight away and have a conversation with them because they need to double check 
that you have enough evidence and enough support to go forward down the formal process. And I guess would you be outlining at the beginning that there are only three informal sessions before it moves on? Or well, you know what, if you really get serious about giving people feedback, you know, go to your team and say, okay, this is how we're going to be giving you feedback from now on. We're going to be using this model. We're going to have these weekly sessions. And, you know, if something doesn't change and we get to the end of the third session, third time we've discussed an issue, we will need to go down the, perform, the formal process. Mm -hmm. And this is the, you know, this is the protocol. Um, unfortunately, in a lot of organisations, they don't, they don't seem to then address the form, they don't go down that formal stage, mm -hmm. which then makes it all a bit of a joke. Mm -hmm. So someone's got to stand up and start getting serious about it. Mm -hmm. And so contact that person or if you have a HR association or someone that you can contact, just get double clarity that you're doing the right thing, do it. Now the process is that once you've decided that you need to go down the formal stage, you will need to then write to the employee and you need to notify them of the performance or misconduct issues and outline those formal feed, informal feedback sessions you've had and the actions that you took to improve it. Also in that letter must be an invitation for that person to bring a support person to the meeting. Now these meetings are usually set within 48 hours, so we don't want a whole week to go past, we need to jump on this straight away. Now if the employee doesn't want to bring a support person, you need to offer them that opportunity again and if they say no for the second time, then you need to document it. So we can't just accept if someone says no, I don't want to bring a support person, you need to give them that second opportunity. Why would someone bring a support person? And you, when you are working, when you're doing a formal um, performance management conversation, they need to have a witness or, or a support person because mm -hmm. you won't go in there just on your own. You're going to have a support person, so your HR person might come in there, or your other another manager might come with you. Because mm -hmm. usually you'll have a scribe, and they need to have that same support. Otherwise, it's two against one. And that would be bullying, it could, could be, be. It could be classified as bullying, yeah. And then if it went down to the point of termination, it, that's what it could look like. Okay. So you need to protect yourself. So that's why we do it twice. Um, who can they bring as their support person? They can bring whoever they like. Mm -hmm. Not just like external? Anyone? Absolutely, anyone. Okay. They can bring their union rep. They can bring their mum, their mum, their <laughs> dad, their lawyer, their brother, their sister, their aunt, bring anyone. Okay. They can bring someone from internally, from someone they work with. Mm -hmm. Although I don't actually recommend that. Mm -hmm. I think that puts a lot of pressure on team members yep. and on friendships, and I don't think it's fair. And we really want to keep these things confidential mm -hmm. between the employee and the main manager and HR. Okay. But they're entitled to bring anyone. All right. So the next process is let's look at conducting the meeting. So when we go into this formal conversation and it's often called, could be called counselling session, there's a number of terminologies out there. What happens is that the very first thing is we all sit down. You need to make sure that you've prepared the meeting as well. Have some water at the table. Have some notepads at the table. Have some tissues at the table because you may need them. You need to introduce everybody at the meeting and then you need to outline the ground rules. And i.e. the ground rules are that the support people are there to support and they're not to interfere or interrupt the meeting. So they're there solely as that witness, taking notes, you know, giving their friend or their colleague or their daughter a hug if they need it, but they're not there to take over. So we, we, we particularly need to say that, especially when we have um, unions and lawyers involved, because they like to take over. So they don't speak? At they all? don't speak ever. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. They're supposed to be in silence. <laughs> 
sometimes these are sick and done. Mm -hmm. Then you um, need to outline all the performance and misconduct issues. When we had this first meeting, this is what we did for you. This was the improvement we saw. Then we saw you drop back, whatever it is, and the dates. Be really, really specific about the dates. Mm -hmm. Now, you then ask the employee to respond. Let's have a chat about it. Let's find out why this has been happening. Now, the interesting thing is that sometimes we get to this point and we find out that the employee has some kind of personal issue going on or something going on in the background and it only just comes out when things get serious. Mm -hmm. So we may then have to adjust what we're going to do and how we're going to manage the situation. If it is still a um, performance or a conduct issue, we then discuss options for development and action plan and preferably over a four week um, period, no longer than that. And we will sit down there and talk about, we might have gone into that meeting with a draft of what we thought might we could do with this person, we discuss it with them, we work out is this going to work for them, do they feel comfortable with it. If they do, then we close off the meeting, we thank them and their supporter for attending and then we go back to our office and we then have a discussion. So I just before, sorry, before yep. you move on. So I know that the informal sessions we were talking about before yep. were fairly casual, but I guess there would be like a grey area when or if an issue is raised within those sessions. So yes, it's informal and yes, we're having a chat and it's off the record. But if there is an issue that's been identified, there's a grey area between this is now not informal because I have to take some pretty detailed notes of the dates and the actions yep. that we talked about and it's moving forward and what we're going to do. So that if it comes to this point in a formal session, you have all those details. Yeah. So normally when you give some informal feedback, if there was to be some kind of okay. so if I was to give you some feedback mm -hmm. and maybe about you coming to work late mm -hmm. and you have said to me, Oh look, I'm really, really sorry, um, you know, I keep sleeping in um, I'd say to her, okay, well, what, what are we going to do to make sure that you're not sleeping in and you will then agree to it that you're going to start coming in on time? Mm -hmm. I would just pop a little email to you and say, hey, Sarah, great to catch up with this morning. Glad we've got that issue sorted out and look forward to you arriving at work on time. Okay. If it still continues, then I would just send you a, a casual email about how you know, what's going on now and what we're going to do about it. Mm -hmm. Great. It's a light message or if you don't want to send that person an email, just drop a journal note down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Spoke to Sarah about her lateness, this is what we're going to do, this mm -hmm. is what we've decided to do. So just keep some kind of informal record there just in case you need it. Some managers have a journal and they write little notes down from their focus meetings or whatever. But as long as you've got something that you can recall back mm -hmm. in the event okay. that you need to use it. Sure. Now, this the whole performance management thing, this the formal process, is a place that we don't really want to go to. Mm -hmm. So if we get it right at the start, we shouldn't have to go here. Yeah. But this is the process if mm -hmm. we do need to go there. Now, one of the things that a lot of people do is present their employee with a first written warning, often at the start of the meeting mm -hmm. or at the end of that first meeting. Now, legally, you cannot do that. Okay. And the reason why you cannot do it is because you have not given them a fair opportunity. How can you write an inform? How can you write a warning about a behaviour that you've actually not fully discussed with your employee in a formal setting? In a formal setting. So. When we've gone into our formal meeting, we've discussed all the issues, we've let our, we've allowed our employee to talk to us about what's been going on and mm -hmm. as I said before, we may find that there's something else that's going on that's mm -hmm. not even relevant. Mm -hmm. So we will need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, how, you, you can't go giving them a warning okay. at that point. So what you do is that you need to go back and discuss the content of the meeting um, with Chakar. Uh, you need to finalise that development plan and milestones. So work out 
you know, finalise that, that after that conversation, then you decide whether a, a first written warning is required. Straight away, or do you wait to see if the it, no, the no. You, well, it's up to you. See, so if if you go into a meeting and you find that there's something wrong, they've got you know a really sick cat or dog or parent or whatever, and that's affecting their their performance, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't give a warning at all because mm -hmm. you actually then would need to provide that person with EAP and okay. support. So, but if it is a um, either a behaviour or it is a skill, you will then have a four week plan that you put together and say, this is what we're going to do for you this week. This is how we're going to help you get to there. And on on this Friday, we're going to touch base and see how you're going. Mm -hmm. The second week, this is the goal that we're set for you. Mm -hmm. Third week and fourth week. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend that you do anything over four weeks. If it is a skill or behaviour situation and they have been um, performing appropriately or correctly in the past and now they're not, they don't need six months. They only need four weeks. So when can, when can we give out our warning? You give out your warning the day afterwards. Oh, the day after? Yeah. Wow, okay. Or if you have a session in the morning, it can be in the afternoon. All right. But you need to go back and consult mm -hmm. and see that it's fair. Okay. Um, the most important thing for you as managers, once you've set the, and you would then give them the formal documentation mm -hmm. of their development plan, their action plan, and their written warning. Mm -hmm. At that point, you just touch base with them, depending on when you can see your HR, get back to them, go through that, and then you need to go back and set an appointment time, a calendar invite in your calendar and their calendar mm -hmm. for a catch up every single week. Oh, okay. Because if you don't do that, and then you end up by terminating a person, fair work will come back and say, but you never followed up with that person. How mm -hmm. did they know that they were approving? Okay. So your responsibility to do that. It is now if your employee improves after one week, you do not take them off the performance management program. We need to make sure it's consistent, mm -hmm. so you keep them. Keep them on it for four weeks. Okay. All right. Yep. So it must stay whatever time frame you decide, then um, that's what it has to be. But it's your responsibility to follow up, follow up, follow up. And then all going, all being well at the end of that four week or whatever action plan you've written up, it would come to a close. It will come to a close. At the start of, um, I should have said in this, at the start of the very first. Um, consultation, that first meeting where we've got their support person, we will also tell them that if there is no improvement after the end of the four weeks or whatever our plan time is, that it could result in termination. So they need to know that it will be there in termination. Um, there is a question from Nerida. Thanks, Nerida. No, the employee doesn't need to have the support person with them when the warning is given to them. Because we would have actually discussed that in that um, earlier meeting to say that we will go back and make a decision um, and work out an appropriate development plan mm -hmm. and if a written warning is required. Okay. So they will know that it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. So that really wraps up the session today. Just remember the key to successful performance is feedback, follow up, feedback, follow up. So you as a leader, really make sure that you give people lots and lots and lots of feedback, lots of praise, and that will reduce the number of situations where you need to do a formal situation. And also this is alongside an already uh, in play performance management system. So if people already have in their PD um, their KPIs and we already have agreed on regular, whether it's six monthly or 12 monthly reviews, this is alongside that, you know, as well as is that. Yeah. So the the reviews, the six monthly reviews, are, you know, how they're tracking towards the KPIs and we're generally the general yeah. one. This is about a particular skill, mm -hmm. performance 
or behavior. Okay. Or issue, yeah. Or issue. Okay. So this is the process. The thing is that you just need to be really diligent about it. You need to document everything. But as a leader, do not go holus bolus and start a formal performance management process yourself. And I guess what you've been harping on, I shouldn't say harping on. I've been ha nagging, 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 nagging. Through this series is really getting into the practice of just giving a lot of feedback all the time yep. so that it's not a big deal yep. if you have to have a conversation with someone. It's you, you and your employees, your team are well comfortable with it, I guess, well, yeah. like, you know, weekly, daily, and if they have issues, if you have issues, it's not a big deal having to sit down and have feedback because it's an ingrained process within well, your team. Well, it is. I just think about giving feedback is getting up in the morning and cleaning your face. <laughs> it's just a habit that you get into and people should feel comfortable about it because you you actually value them. If you don't give people feedback, you don't value them. And please tell me you get better at it with practice because I oh, hate it. I know. It's <laughs> awful. It's really hard. Practice on your dog and your cats first <laughs> or your kids. Um, but once you practice it, we will send out the model again mm -hmm. with this um, with slide presentation. The more you practice it, the better you will get at it. But the key is that every time you go to give feedback, I would say, write it down. Well, what is your positive intent? What is it you, you've actually observed? And what is the impact it's having? And just write it down. Say it to yourself in front of the mirror. Say it to someone else. Practice it. Practice it in the car on the way. Practice it in the car. And the more you do it, the more confident you will get um, by giving them feedback. And this is your opportunity to just talk to them about situations when you have those one-on-one -on -one focus meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, what's going on? I've, I've observed this, you know, this is what's happening, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So really, you know, take that time to really build that relationship in those one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. If you want to go and do it over coffee, you know, go and do it over coffee. If you want to go and sit in the park on a nice fine day, go and do it there. You don't have to do it in the office. It's informal. Let's go for a walk around the block and have a chat. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. Okay. Does anybody have any questions that they'd like to add to this? If not in this setting, you can certainly contact Guy um, with any questions that you have, if you want to have a her or any follow-up that you need. But if there aren't any further questions for this particular session, uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us again for this webinar on performance management in the workplace. And thank Di for coming in again to That's do this my session. Pleasure. And we would love to see you again in the next session. Yeah, fantastic. And our next session is going to be around resume writing. Good time just before Christmas. Good time before year. Christmas. So it may not be something you're interested in, but you may know of someone who is out there looking for work. And we're going to do a series on resume writing, interview skills, um, in January for um, people going for jobs and then we're going to do some interview skills for managers so they can interview properly. Excellent. So cool. thanks very much everyone. Thank you everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. Thanks Di. Thank you. Bye.